Hello everyone. Welcome to the new video of computer networking. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to configure two LANs that is local area networks, one with the help of switch as a connecting device and another LAN with the help of hub using uh, Cisco packet tracer software. Then by simulating these two LANs on a Cisco packet tracer, we will check is there any difference uh, between the working of these two networks. Then finally we will conclude in this video at the end by comparing LANs with the help of switch and a hub what is the difference between switch and a hub and their workings. So let's start the video. This is how we are going to form two networks. One LAN with the help of switch and three PCs and another LAN with the help of hub and three PCs. So Let's start uh, building this network on Cisco Packet Tracer. So I have opened Cisco Packet Tracer software and I have uh, mentioned titles as the difference between switch and a hub and LAN 1 using switch and LAN 2 using hub. So let's build the network. Now for that purpose I am going to select switch, one switch then hub to form second network then end devices that are PCs so I am going to select three PCs one two and three then PC4 PC5 and PC6 now I am going to connect them with the help of connecting wires. Now for connecting switch or hub with the PCs we have to use Ethernet straight over cable for connecting them because we are going to connect PCs which are nothing but end devices with the connecting devices that are switch and hub. So as these two are different types of devices that is one is end device another one is a uh, connecting device so we have to use straight over ethernet cable if we want to connect to similar types of devices that is end device to end device that is PC to PC or connecting device to connecting device that is switch to hub or switch to switch or hub to hub then we have to use crossover ethernet cable. So here in this case we are going to connect two different types of devices that is switch to PCs and hub to PCs. So in that case we are going to use Ethernet straight over cable. So let's start uh, building this. So let's connect them together with the help of wires. So I am going to use straight over cable. Now you can see the switch is having 24 ports. One I have used so now 23 remaining fast ethernet port PC is having only one port to connect third port I am connecting it to PC now first LAN is built now we are going to build second LAN now you can see the hub is having six ports Port 2, I am going to connect PC2. Port 3, I am going to connect to PC3. And that's all. Now, here very important point we have to note. Switch and hub both does not require IP addresses. Or you can say they does not recognize IP addresses. But as we are going to form LANs, we need to use IP addresses to demonstrate all PCs are part of one single private network that is LAN. Okay, so we as we are saying it is LAN, local area network. So it should follow networking policy like all PCs should have same network ID in a particular network. So for that purpose, we have to configure them with the help of IP addresses. So let's configure every PC with an IP address. So in this case for LAN 1 which is use, uses switch I am going to choose 
a network ID as 192.168.1.0 as a network ID and for the second LAN that is LAN 2 with the hub I am going to choose 192.168.2.0 as a network ID okay so I am mentioning it here with the text and later on we are going to configure them so here network id i am going to assign one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot zero and to the second network i am going to assign i uh, network id as two dot zero what is the meaning of this the every PCs connected in respective networks should have 192.168.2 uh, as a common number in the network ID field in LAN 2 whereas 192.168.1 this should be common in every PC in LAN 1 then that 0 where it is indicating 0 that 0 indicates that it is a host ID field so it can range from 1 to 255 so we can assign any number there but we have to keep in mind that network id we have to keep same in all the pieces connected in a respective network so let's mention it here again so for this i am going to assign 2.1 for second I am going to assign 2.2 or 2.20 whatever and third I am going to assign 2.100 similarly in LAN 1 I am going to assign 1.1 .1 first we see Then to second PC, I am going to assign 1.10. The third PC, I am going to assign 1.100. So in this way, we can assign IP addresses to respective PCs. Okay. Now, uh, actually, we are going to configure uh, these PCs because we have just mentioned it with the help of text. Now we have to actually configure this. So for that purpose click on the any PC go to desktop IP configuration and assign that particular IP address mentioned in the text that is 1.1 .1. okay to the first PC close it second PC one dot ten. third PC of LAN 1 1.100 similarly in the second LAN go to respective PC it is 2.1 to and second PC is 2.20 last PC is 2.100 that's all we have configured all the PCs now to check the working difference or similarity with two networks we have to turn on simulation so I'm going to turn on the simulation Now I am going to select simple data packet that is PDU and place it on one PC of one LAN and another PC of the same LAN so that those two PC will act as a source and destination. So let's do it. 
so this is pdu i'm just going to place it on pc number one of first lan and pc number three of first lan okay similarly i'm going to follow the same process in the second network pc number four to pc number six i want to send the packets now you can see here two protocols are initiated that you can observe in the simulation panel event view list present in the right hand side you just check icmp and arp these two protocols are initiated initially icmp is initiated at pc at pc number one because in the form first network i want to send packet from pc number one to pc number three so pc number one will be source pc number three will be destination similarly pc number four is a source in the second network and pc number six will be the destination so that's why at source pc the communication is initiated with the help of icmp and icmp is called because we are nothing but doing pinging pinging means checking the connection between the uh, two devices source and destination for that purpose we are going to send uh, certain random packets okay with the help of ping command so here placing these pdus are nothing but what calling a ping command so that's why icmp is initiated because ping is a type of icmp now icmp uses ip address now to deliver packets locally and as we have already discussed that switch and hub that does not recognize ip addresses so for uh, recognizing those addresses of destination we have to provide mac address to switch and hub so for that purpose what we are going to do we are going to use arp address resolution protocol now that this address resolution protocol is what it is going to take ip address of source and mac address of source pc and it is going to take ip address of destination pc from the icmp packet and now it is going to find the mac address of destination pc so that it can start a communication locally so for that purpose it is using arp okay now uh, in the second network as well it is going to do the same so now we are going to start the simulation so we will forward these packets and you will see the working difference now packet reached to the respective connecting device yeah this is the arp packet now you can see arp is a broadcast message because we are not knowing mac address of respective destination pc so what happens this switch and hub will broadcast those messages who are not having mac addresses present inside them so these are arp is a uh, request message so request message is a broadcast message so arp broadcasts that packets to every outgoing link so what happens pc2 in the first network which is not a destination still it receives that packet along with pc3 and in the second network pc5 which is not a destination pc still it receives the packet along with the pc6 now what happens as those packets are not having ip addresses of pc2 and pc5 pc2 and pc5 will discard those packets by observing ip addresses they will recognize that these ip addresses are not of uh, my ip address so they will discard those I, uh, packets now pc3 accept that i uh, packet and it will reply back now reply back means what it is arp reply arp reply is unicast message why unicast because it has destinations ip address destinations mac address and previously received arp request message which has source ip and source mac it will copy that as a destination ip and destination mac of pc1 and pc4 of lan1 and lan2 respectively so that's why now we just check now this is the difference of working in switch you can see the switch recognizes mac address and it filter out the packets with the help of mac address so now arp reply which is coming from pc3 in the network one it reached to pc1 only switch will not broadcast it because switch is now having a mac address of destination destination is pc1 here okay so that's why pc1 will receive the arp reply whereas in hub hub is not recognizing mac as well hub is just going to broadcast just going to broadcast the message 
so whichever outgoing ports are available hub is going to broadcast it on respective links so that's why pc5 will also receive reply which is not meant for him okay so this is how we can see the difference now again we will check the further difference now arp packets arp uh, is now over icmp started so pc1 sends icmp pinging message pc4 will send icmp ping message to switch and hub respectively now just check just check the difference hub is again broadcasting it whereas the switch which already receives mac address of pc3 and mac address of pc1 it will only do unicasting unicasting means sending packet from one uh, node to another node or specific node whereas hub is again going to broadcast this icmp packets as well though it is having mac addresses okay again a reply icmp reply it reads to respective uh, connecting device now just check hub is again going to broadcast whereas switch is going to unicast as hub is always broadcasting and not recognizing mac as well and switch is recognizing a mac and doing one to one communication so that's why switch is called intelligent device than hub now we will see what can be the effect adverse effect of this broadcasting of hub and what are the advantage of unicasting of switch so there are two main uh, points that we have to note down that is hub creates unnecessary traffic by broadcasting packets on every outgoing link every time because with whatever request or reply is coming to hub it is going to broadcast it to outgoing links it only uses one intelligence that is it is not going to send the packet on the incoming link from which it has received that packet only that intelligence is has uh, hub is using otherwise it is going to broadcast packets on every outgoing link that's why hub creates unnecessary network traffic in a particular network and second point is what unintended pcs we can see in case of hub pc5 is unintended receiver means pc5 is not uh, having any part in the communication still it receives packets so what happens if that packet is consisting of any confidential information then pc5 will receive that confidential information though it is not meant for pc5 so it creates a very serious security concern so we can conclude here in this video and we can summarize this video that hub is always broadcasting it is not recognizing mac address it is always broadcasting the packets on every outgoing link so because of that two problems occurs hub is creating unnecessary network traffic and hub is not providing security of data whereas if you can compare it with the switch switch is doing unicasting so it is sending packet from one uh, node to another node that is specific node and it is as it is not broadcasting the message it is uh, switch is minimizing the network traffic or eliminating the network traffic and the second point switch is providing security of data because it is not broadcasting so other pcs will not receive that packets okay so that's all for today's video hope you have enjoyed it and you like this video so i request everyone so please like share this video and subscribe to my channel to get the new updates regarding the new videos that i'm going to upload in future thank you and have a great learning